Okay, welcome back to the channel guys. Um, today we're going to explore um, Greyfields Colliery and Moorsland Colliery. Now we're going to start off with Greyfields Colliery. At the moment I'm just walking up a road that passed between uh, the two patches for Graysmoor Colliery. Now Graysmoor Colliery was to our left and to our right, just there, is uh, one of the batches for Graysfield Colliery. Now, just up here, just ahead of us, is all that's left of the parapet of a bridge that took the tramway from Gracefield Colliery over to the batch on our right. Um, obviously the bridge is long gone, but the parapet uh, walls or bricks are still there. So we'll have a look at them and then we'll move around to where the colliery is itself. It's quite busy around here actually with a lot of dog walkers, so it must be a popular area, area to go looking at nature and stuff. So here we are at the bridge. So yeah, you can still see the bricks of uh, the bridge. So it came over here, took uh, the tramway to the batch there from the colliery. I'll give you some information about Gracefield Colliery very shortly. But yeah, so Gracefield was near High Littleton. Right, so let's go and explore the actual colliery itself. Okay, here we are approaching Greyfield Colliery. Now, I reckon roughly where that building is in front of us, that's where the shafts were. As you'll see in a minute, and by this old photograph I'm going to show you, and mix it in. That there ahead is the old uh, engine house. So the shafts re roughly are behind that house there. Right, so let's give some details about Greyfield Colliery as we walk around. Greyfield Colliery opened in 1833 and was part of the Earl of Warwick's Clutton group of collieries. The mine had two coaling shafts. These were not sunk at the same time. The older shaft, which was nearer to the winding engine, was square with wooden guides, while the other sunk possibly when cages were introduced in the 1860s and was a 10 foot in diameter with wire rope guides. The cages were often rather hazardous, the story of Mr Brimble who once fell out of the cage in the old shaft. Luckily he lodged in a recess and the men in the next cage to pass were rather disconcerted to hear a voice in the darkness calling for a light. The third shaft was sunk solely for ventilation and lay to the north of the coaling shafts. The fourth shaft was equipped with a Cornish beam engine for pumping water out of the workings. On the 14th of September 1909 the colliery was the scene of a major disaster when water from old workings broke into the streak vein. There was no loss of life because the inrush of water was carried away into the lowest workings of the new vein where no men were working. The only casualties in fact were six pit ponies drowned in the Dabchick vein. By the 30th of September 1909 the pit had been cleared of water and most of the miners were back at work. But the writing was on the wall and on the 28th of May 1911 the colliery was closed making 152 men and boys redundant. There we are looking at the engine house for uh, Greyfield Colliery. Now what we're going to do now is walk up to Moorsland Colliery. Now I mentioned the limited road access to the pit head. A double track clam tramway incline with a drum at its head was built from the colliery to the coal depot on the Bath to High Littleton Road. This tramway did not last and the tramway was replaced with a road and this is the road we're currently on. This is probably due to in 1847 a broad grade railway was proposed to serve the colliery, but this never happened. It wasn't until 1873 that siding was laid off the Bristol and North Somerset Railway. Now that was Greysfield siding, which was just been down. So yeah, we're now following the, the area of the tramway. We'll go up to where the coal depot was, um, which means passing Moorsland colliery, and uh, then we'll 
you look at Morsley Dun Colliery on the way back down. So let's trek up this incline. It's always, always the same, it's always uphill. And let's go and uh, have a look at where the coal depot was and where the, the drum house where all the cables were to, to work the uh, incline. So that's the incline we've just walked up. And this is the bath to High Littleton Road. Now the area of the drum house was in there, obviously long gone. Um, this is where the coal depot was as well. So before the railway line was built in 18, what did I say, 1873, um, the coal was brought up from the tramway up to here and then obviously went by road. Yeah, so that's the area of the um, drum house and the coal depot for Greyfield and Moreland's colliery, I should have thought. Collier's house. I wonder what that was. We'll have to have a look on a map. Was that the coal cell depot? Okay, so we're what halfway down the incline again and we're back at Moores Lane Colliery, which is now I think it's Greyfield Farm. So let's have a look at this here, there's not much to see. So Moreland's colliery had been an independent pit which had been sunk to the Radstock seams at some point in 1840. Years later, Moreland's coal output was transferred via an underground tramway and a drift which ran from Greyfield pit head to the bottom of Moor Lane shafts. The drift was known as the Cuckoo. At some point the shafts were taken out of use for coal winding but they remained for ventilation purposes. On the 4th of June 1904, the Cuckoo Drift and the workings were abandoned. So yeah, you wouldn't know nothing was there now. It's just um, Greyfield Farm. Now, the Cuckoo Drift ran from um, just north of the coal shafts at Greyfield Colliery and ran up to the bottom of uh, the shaft at Moorsland uh, Colliery. Okay, we've walked uh, uh, down this um, little footpath down towards Clutton. Now I'm actually stood on the Greyfield siding. Now that ran from Clutton into Greyfield Colliery. Um, so it joined in at Clutton up to the Bristol North Somerset Railway. Um, so this is it here, we're on the embankment for it. And um, there's not much of it survives, but uh, I'll show you the where it was, um, where it was on a map so you can kind of see on the landscape but um, yeah when they first built it there was no locomotive power so what they used was horses so the horses would draw um, the empty uh, coal wagons back to the colliery and the loaded uh, wagons would be uh, would use gravity uh, they'd have a couple of uh, blokes uh, traveling with them how safe is that but um, yeah, so if they stopped, they'd try and get them going again. So yeah, so this is Greyfield Sidings. Uh, it, basically, Greyfield Colliery is just in the distance there. So it went straight down there, bent round to the right. Um, we're gonna try and follow it actually, see how far we can get, hopefully get the drone up. Um, but those two, see those two hills in the distance with trees on, that's the batches for Greyfield Colliery. So here you can see we're following what's left of the embankment for um, grey siding. Uh, so what can I tell you about grey siding? At first it seems the sidings were worked by horses, which I've mentioned, they pulled the empty trucks 
and the loaded trucks were allowed to run down the great to the Great Western Line by gravity. The first locomotive was a 040 saddle tank built by R. W. Hawthorne in 1885, named Francis, but also known as the Coffee Pot. With the arrival of the locomotive power, gravity working ceased, but for a period of 1894. It was reintroduced due to the locomotive being repaired after a train of wagons ran away on icy rails. Eight wagons were smashed to splinters on the Great Western Railway siding. So yeah, and this is where it was. So this is the embankment. Obviously a lot of it's been reclaimed, but you can kind of see it. It just bends around there. It's got a slight uh, incline to it I wouldn't want to have been riding on the on the wagons when they were doing the gravity working but hey there's no health and safety in them days but that's the colliery over there you just see it just over there where that uh, batch is just to the left of it it's kind of in a little dip but I'll try and get the drone up and fly over that Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, that's Greyfield Colliery and Moorsland Colliery done. Uh, I don't know where we'll be going next, but uh, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.